Hey, welcome to the crux. In this video, we continue our discussion on the history of the genetic code, and specifically, we are wrapping up our discussion on the diamond code. Previously, we have talked about the symmetry basis that George Gomov postulated, which simply states that amino acid side chains are symmetrical, and thus the code can be side flipped or end flipped without any change in the meaning. If you want to learn more about the fundamentals of diamond code, check out my previous videos. I've linked them in the description below and in the cards on the top right corner. We can get a brief refresher of this diamond code by looking at this example. So if you have this stretch of DNA, you have TGA coding for the first amino acid, then next codon begins immediately at the second base. So you have GAG codon. And then finally, you have AGC as the last codon. And in this code, on average, each base here, for instance, A or T, is used in three successive codons. And this is why diamond code is also an overlapping code. But one important thing to keep in mind is that the diamond code is purely theoretical, so it's not a real genetic code. But we can nonetheless learn about the interesting bits or significances of the diamond code. The first obvious one is that the diamond code maximizes the information storage capacity, because diamond code is an overlapping code. So let's see why it's an efficient way of storing information. Take for instance this DNA strand. So according to the diamond code, this DNA contains three codes, TGA, GAG, and AGC. So it results in three amino acids. Now if we set the overlap by skipping the middle base of the code, you get TGA and AGC. And that results in two amino acids. And we can compare this to a non-overlapping code, where this strand will only give rise to one amino acid using the TGA codon. Now TGA is actually a stop codon, but diamond code was postulated in 1954, and stop codons were discovered in 1960s. Here's a fun fact about TGA. It actually also codes for selenocysteine, which is a non-standard amino acid, which is also known as the 21st amino acid. It happens if a selenocysteine insertion sequence is available. So now talking about the information packing, we have five bases coding for three amino acids in the diamond code. If we reduce the overlap, we have five bases coding for two amino acids. And if we have no overlap, we have five bases for one amino acid. So you already see that the information packing efficiency is higher in the diamond code than the rest. This difference actually becomes much more prominent if you have a longer stretch of DNA. So in this piece of DNA strand, we have 16 bases that result in 14 amino acids. And if this DNA was using a non-overlapping code, you would have only five amino acids from these 16 bases. And the maximization of information in the diamond code is such that the ratio of the number of bases to the number of amino acid becomes one to one, which is the highest you can have. And this is equivalent to saying that on average, each base has the potential to code for one amino acid. So in general, in the diamond code, you would have 22 bases for 20 amino acid, which is pretty close to about one to one ratio. Whereas in a non-overlapping code, you would need 60 bases, which gives you a three to one ratio of the number of bases to the number of amino acids. The other important significance of the diamond code is that it reduces frame shift mutation consequences. So if you have this DNA sequence, you will have an overlapping set of codons. And if you shift the reading frame from A to T, you will only affect the ATG codon, which is the first codon, and nothing downstream of it. So the consequence of frame shift in the diamond code at most can appear like a deletion. Versus in the non-overlapping genetic code, the same sequence will read as ATG and GAC. But if you shift the frame from A to T, this will cause it to be read as TGG and ACT. So it changes the meaning completely. So these are the two interesting bits about the diamond code. Now we can take a look at its major downfall or limitations. The first is the overlapping property, which actually constrains the resulting protein sequence. If you have a codon TGA as the first codon, it will code for the first amino acid. Then the next amino acid to be coded, it must have a codon that starts with the GA. And thus, it can only be GAT, GAC, GAG, or GAA. And this second codon will code for the second amino acid. 
Now, contrast this with the non-overlapping code. The TGA, of course, will result in the same amino acid, but the second codon is completely independent of the first one, so you have no constraints on the second amino acid. This was argued and shown by the great Sidney Brenner in his paper that basically disproved the diamond code. He explained this concept of constraint by using the example of dipeptide diversity. Dipeptide is just another way of saying that there are only two amino acids in a chain. So the calculations were straightforward. Under the diamond code, you would need four bases to code for a dipeptide. So for instance, in these examples, you have four bases that have two codons and that code for two amino acids. And because there are four possible bases, A, T, G, and C, and you also need four bases to code for dipeptides, there will be in total 256 dipeptides possible under the diamond code. But we know that there are 20 natural amino acids in total. And if you think about two amino acids joined together, you can have multiple combinations. And the total number of combinations is just 20 to the exponent of 2, which is 400 dipeptides. However, under diamond code, you can only produce 256 dipeptides. But in nature, there are 400 possibilities. And Sidney Brenner actually confirmed the presence of the 144 dipeptides that usually are not possible under the diamond code. So he showed that there are no such constraints on the protein sequences that exist in nature. The second limitation is the problem of single nucleotide substitutions, which can be very severe under the diamond code. If we have this piece of DNA strand, under the diamond code, you get three codons, and that gives rise to three amino acids. Now, if you mutate this A to C, it affects all three amino acids, because this A is shared by three codons. And this is exactly what we said in the beginning, that each nucleotide is shared by three successive codons. In contrast, doing the same exercise with the non-overlapping code, you have TGA producing one amino acid, and the remaining codons are independent. And if you have a substitution of A to C, it will only affect this one amino acid. So the consequences are less severe. And evolutionarily speaking, because frame shifts are under strong purifying selection, you usually see more of substitutions in nature. And in this respect, having a diamond code is not an advantageous strategy. So these are some of the major limitations that were seen in the diamond code in the 1950s. Now comparing with what we know today about the genetic code, what other limitations of diamond code can you think of? Leave your answers in the comment section below. And with this, we wrap up our discussion about the diamond code. If you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a like and comment in the section below and share it with your friends. And if you have any suggestions or questions, comment them below as well. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.